to explain our profitability, I couldn't do it right now. I mean, we don't even have a month under our belt. Uh, we're excited to gain that time range so that we do have a chance to step back and analyze everything. Um, Keith, thankfully, is a banker, and he breaks over numbers throughout the day and is very uh, conservative and keeps an eye on our bottom line. That's something I don't do, and I'm super thankful that we have, yeah, we have that connection. And then our third partner, we actually have three partners, is um, our manager. So he's there all day, every day. And uh, he's the operations guy, so he knows how a gym runs throughout the day, knows what the, the climbers want, and uh, knows how to put the holds on the wall, and how to develop a team that puts the holds on the wall, what are called routes or problems, if you've ever been to the SRC. Um, so it's been a real blessing, the team that kind of organically was developed out of uh, just a simple meeting. I, I kind of spearheaded it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I had heard through the grapevine that Keith wanted to start a gym in town. And I invited him, and I think we had like 10 people there. Yeah, there was a lot of us at the first meeting. And yeah, we just discussed our interest in bringing something to Boone that we had a, a very strong passion for. Mm -hmm. um, and it turned out that Keith and Aaron, the two guys I just mentioned, were the ones that kept coming to every meeting and developed from there. It's been about a two year project. And um, just to speak to the passion piece, I think in entrepreneurship, you have to have a passion. Um, and basically, something you care about or you want to do or want to see very badly, because that'll take you through the ups and the downs. And it makes sense of things. You know, a business has a mission. And that mission usually <coughs> starts with a passion from an individual or a group of individuals. I want to speak a little bit to my experience as an MBA, because I think that's an important thing. Um, I came into the program after UNC Wilmington. I got an accounting degree there. And then I got into hospitality for a little bit. Did uh, two years of that in sales. And was really lost after my accounting degree. Which is funny, because you mentioned <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, all my classmates, you know, they went out and they, you know, got with Grant Thornton, and, you know, one, one of the big eight, and um, if they didn't do that, they found a, a position with a good firm, and I just didn't have a passion for accounting, but I got that undergraduate because I thought it was a smart thing to do, and honestly, my dad told me to do it. <laughs> so I'm paying for your college, you're going to get a degree that you and it's funny because I was kind of forced into that, and I'm so thankful for it today because those accounting skills translate into everything I'm doing, just like sales skills translate. But I had a good three years where I was very lost on what I wanted to do. And I struggled with that because I knew there was opportunity out there, and then that drove me to come back to Boone and get my MBA. And I saw the MBA as a time to reanalyze where I wanted to go and connect with the network. And Kate, I think you can speak to this as well, but App State has a great network. You know, people are very passionate about this place. And they have ties to it that they might come back for football games, they might still live here. But if you can find those network channels through the MBA program and use them towards whatever you want, I think that's one of the best things you can do in this program. You know, just be dogged about leveraging every asset this program has for you. And finding out what it is and not feeling bad about it. You know? That's... <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? So, uh, with Boone being such a big you know, college town, uh, what's the way that you guys are like, trying to reach college students? Are you trying to be like a family setting? Uh, or a college setting, or trying to do like both, or uh, I, I looked on your website and I knew, noticed you have like uh, year-long memberships, or you can pay your dues yearly, etc. So it's not just you know come in every or you know just come in one Saturday and pay to do it. Then you can you know make this uh, every Saturday. Or, you know, 
be it stressed out, go work out, or whatever it is. Uh, but like, who are you trying to target? You trying to target families mostly, or like, college students? I mean, I'll be pretty broad with it and just say, uh, I think we're really trying to target climbers first, and then the fitness community second. But um, the reason we started the gym was because, um, to be honest, we were going to the SRC and. Uh, I couldn't find a parking spot. Um, I would find a parking <laughs> spot and I'd go inside and I'd have to find a student who was a curtain student who could sign me in for five dollars. <laughs> and I'd fill out, I'd fill out on the wait list and I'd wait for an amount to have. And so that's kind of, that's really where it started, just out yeah. of pure frustration. Mm -hmm. And I knew there was a lot of other climbers that shared that frustration. So um, that's kind of one of the big parts, but <laughs> but I guess we were targeting climbers first. We know there was a lot of climbers that didn't have a place to go. We had heard about all these houses, um, they're called woodies, and people build them in their garage. They build like really steep structures like roofs in their garages, and they're just popping up everywhere and really not safe, and um, so those are getting overcrowded. So at that time, we kind of realized that yeah, there needs to be a climbing gym. So. Um, climbers and then I'd say fitness people, but we're definitely trying to get families in there. Mm -hmm. we're, that's definitely part of our target. Yeah, the year-round residents, you know, we have to have them, and they have to cater to what they want. We could cater to just climbers, but, you know, half of them are gone throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. We can fall flat on our face if we don't get year-round commitments and revenue. Along those lines, uh, as far as re uh, cost of revenue streams and who your target consumer segment is, um, how do you how are you going to advertise? What, what do you feel are the best avenues of advertising up here? Because we have many, but some are ignored more than others. Yeah. Well, you know, I think labeled as the marketer target. Um, you know, our, our roles are constantly fluctuating. Oh yeah. Um, you know, some of them stick, like Keith is our cash flow guy and financial statement guy. But um, as the marketer, I should have a better answer. <laughs> uh, we have used almost uh, unanimously uh, Facebook and uh, sure. Instagram. Sure. And, you know, I know through my work with High Country Local First and Ascent Business Network, you know, there are an infinite amount of marketing channels and advertisement channels you can go through. Um, we haven't spent any big bucks yet on that type of thing. We have put money into social media and Facebook, which from an analytics st standpoint and tracking standpoint is one of the best uh, systems you can use. Yeah, I mean, you can put it yeah, you can look at your, your demographic that you're hitting. You can see who's doing your page. That's right. And you can put twenty dollars into a post that says, "Hey, we have youth programs now," and you can track how that twenty dollars is getting out there, who's seeing it, and um, it's been really powerful for us. Honestly, we did an Indiegogo campaign. Did anybody see that the crowdfunding campaign that we did? Um, is, is everybody here familiar with crowdfunding? Kickstarter. Yeah, Indiegogo. Yeah, Indiegogo is a little more flexible. I'll talk about Kickstarter for a minute, just because crowdfunding is, you know, from an entrepreneurship standpoint, crowdfunding is getting more and more popular, and there's actually laws being passed right now, pushed to allow for um, crowdfunding and equity. So basically, somebody would contribute to your campaign and get a little piece of ownership in your business, which is crazy and it's going to be really hard to track and govern. But that's happening right now. So that's what it's going to stop for this chart. Yeah, it's it's going to be wide. But Indiegogo is actually the best marketing tool that we had and, and continues to be because we put our project out there, our passion, and um, people basically donated at whatever level they felt they should and in return they received levels of membership and some swag, you know, t-shirts, stickers, things like that. That was huge for us as well. But 
from a organized advertising strategy, we need help there. And you know, we're gonna continue to kick it back and forth with the team. It's hard in Boone too, because you can pour money into you know somebody who's gonna get your name out there and you know, there goes five thousand dollars and you know, none of your target customers saw. It's a matter of finding the proper app we're working on it. But right now it's gonna be Radio. Radio is old school, but it works. Yeah, I was going to say the, um, <coughs> one thing that, I mean, I, I help with the marketing for the MBA program, and one thing that's huge for us is the Apple Cart. Yeah. You would be surprised yeah, how that's 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 everybody that's driving that's around and sees our sign on the Apple Cart. You mean like the back of the Apple Cart? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> that is how we get a large percentage of our students, especially the night program students, for whatever reason. Well, she got to they run ads on the mm -hmm. Yeah, they okay. do. Cool. Athletic, you know, related. They're the, easy. So, cool. Also, um, do you guys or ever look at the books, little coupon books that you get in your uh, um, mailbox? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I use that thing. Those, those are awesome. Yeah. Okay, I I'm actually sure that those. Yeah. Yeah. curious on that. I that's the one of the main places I advertise, and I was just curious on, like, I'm coupon queen, but I'm like, I wonder, and I use it all the time in college, but I always wonder if it's just 95% of people just throw it away, um, or if it's something that you guys look at. Like, um, this is like 